So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the weighted average cost of capital. It's an idea that's usually seen in sort of upper year finance courses, and it's a very important thing to know, specifically if you're pursuing careers in things like investment banking, equity research, sales, and trading. Uh, it's essentially the idea of, it's similar to the idea of interest payments or the required rate of return on bonds, except it applies to entire companies. So as I discussed in an earlier video, companies can raise financing either through debt or equity. So they can either take on specific debt from institutions, financial institutions, or they can sell out stakes in their company uh, to investors. So when you sort of weigh that together, investors both on the debt side and the equity side have a required rate of return, what they expect to be compensated for, uh, for giving you their money. And sort of weighing that for seeing how much a debt and a how much debt and equity a company has taken on, and sort of weighing that to see how much an average investor from both sides would expect it to be comp would expect to be compensated is known as sort of the average weighted cost of capital. So the formula for this is actually seen as follows, and I'll sort of write it down on the board, but uh, I'll also have it down here just so you can view it throughout the entire video. So the weighted average cost of capital, and I'll just write that up here. So the weighted average cost of capital is exactly what it is. So you weigh the weights of how much a debt a company has, you weigh how much equity it has, and you multiply both by the respective return and you add them together. So here's what I mean by that. So let's say your company has a specific amount of debt. So let's say it has 60% debt. So we'll call that the weight of debt. So weight of debt is 60%. And you multiply that by how much you're paying, what the interest rate is on outstanding debt. And for if you're valuing a company, for example, you sort of uh, find out the outstanding sort of yield to maturity um, on the bonds that you have. So let's say I'll call that the cost of debt. So 60% of debt in your company and the required rate of return for, de return for debt investors will give you this portion. And you add that to the weight of equity. So let's say I mentioned that we have 60% debt in our company, that means 40% of it comes from equity. So you add that to multiply that by the cost of equity. And the KW here is actually from a previous video I discussed is calculated through the CAPM, the Capital Asset prices mo Pricing Model, which incorporates things like the company's beta, the riskiness, the risk free rate, and the market rate. So if you haven't checked that video out, be sure to do so. so this is the sort of underlying formula of cost, uh, weighted average cost of capital. And there's one other component. So, and sometimes if a company also has preferred shares, so if it's issued um, non-common shares, known as preferred shares, you also add uh, the weight of preferred shares multiplied by the cost of preferred shares. And we'll add all three of these up, and we'll get a number which sort of gives an overlying, uh, overarching idea of what the weight, uh, what the average weighted cost of capital is for the company. Um, and specifically, this is most important and sort of more application-wise when you're valuing companies. So, as you know, when you do something like a discounted cash flow, the value of a company is actually the the present value of all of its future cash flows. And when you discount those future cash flows, you actually discount it at the weighted average cost of capital, since it incorporates both the cost of debt, the cost of common equity, and the cost of preferred equity. So this was sort of an introduction to the weighted average cost of capital. Uh, in the next video, I'll be going over sort of an example of how this is computed and how it's used.